Hi sweeties! For today's video, we're going to talk about utilization of assessment data. At the end of this chapter, you would be able to apply statistics in research and in any systematic investigation, construct frequency distribution for a given set of scores, and graph the scores using histogram and frequency distribution. Let's talk about statistics. Statistics is a very important tool in the utilization of the assessment data, most especially in describing, analyzing, and interpreting the performance of the students in the assessment procedures. The teacher should have the necessary background in the statistical procedure used in assessment of students learning in order to give a correct description and interpretation about the achievement of the students in a certain test whether classroom assessment conducted by the teacher, division, or national assessment conducted by the Department of Education. In this chapter, we shall discuss the important tools in analyzing and interpreting assessment results. These statistical tools are measures of central tendency, measures of variation, skewness, correlation, and different converted scores. We have here the definition of statistics. So when we talk about statistics, it is a branch of science which deals with the collection, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of quantitative data. In this statistical question, it is a question where you expect to get a variety of answers and you are interested in the distribution and tendency of those answers. We have two branches of statistics, the descriptive statistics and the inferential statistics. So when we talk about descriptive statistics, it is a method concerned with collecting, describing, and analyzing a set of data without drawing conclusions or inferences about a large group. While the inferential statistics is a branch of statistics concerned with the analysis of a subset of data leading to predictions or inferences about the entire set of data. So let's take a look with this flowchart. We have here the statistical methods for descriptive methods and inferential methods. In the descriptive methods, we use graphs and numerical summaries. While in inferential methods, we use confidence intervals and the significance test. Now, let's talk about frequency distribution. In frequency distribution, it is a tabular arrangement of data in the appropriate category showing the number of observations in each category or group. So let's take a look with this frequency distribution for the test scores of 52 students in e statistics. If we have here columns for class intervals or the CI, the frequency or F, the class mark or X, class boundary for CV, relative frequency for RF, the less than cumulative frequency, and the greater than cumulative frequency. Later on, we will discuss how are we going to compute these parts of frequency table. Now, let's proceed to the advantages of frequency distribution. First advantages of using frequency distribution is it encompasses the size of the table and it makes the data more interpretative. Let's talk about the class limit. Class limit is the groupings or categories defined by the lower or upper limits. So let's take a look with this table. As you can see, we have have here the groupings. The 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24, 25 to 29, and 30 to 34. Now, the 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30 are the lower class limits while the 14, 19, 24, 29 and 34 are our upper class limit and our 
frequency are 4, 5, 3, 4, and... Now, let's proceed to the lower class limit or the LL represents the smallest number in each group, while the upper class limit or the UP represents the highest number in each group. For example, in this group 1 to 4, 1 is our smallest number and that would be our lower class limit and 4 is our highest number in that group. So, 4 is our upper class limit. Now, let's proceed to class size or the CI. Class size is the width of each class interval. For example, the 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24. So, in those group, we, they have the interval. Sa bawat group na banggit, meron itong pagitan or tinatawag na interval. So, madami tayong paraan, madami tayong paraan kung paano i-compute itong ating interval. First is by counting. Just like 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So, our class interval or our class size is 5. But, another method is by subtracting the upper limits to lower limit then add 1 just like 14 minus 10 it is equal to 4 plus 1 is equal now to 5 and 5 is our class size in this score distribution let's proceed to class boundaries class boundaries are the numbers used to separate each category in the frequency distribution but without gaps created by the class limits. The score of the students are discrete. We will just add 0.5 to the upper limit to get the upper class boundary and subtract 0.5 to the lower limit to get the lower class boundary in each group or category. So let's take a look with this example. We have here the lower limit which is the 10, 15, 20 and the upper limit is the 14, 19 and 24. Now, how are we going to compute the lower limit and the upper limit? In computing the lower limit, we will just subtract 0 0.5 just like 10 minus 0 0.5. This, the result would be 9.5. 15 minus 0 0.5, the result is 14.5. 20 minus 0.5, the result is 19.5. While in the upper class limit, we will just add 0.5. Just like 14 plus 0.5, the result is 14.5. 19 plus 0.5, the result is 19.5. And 24 plus 0.5, the result is 24.5. Now, let's talk about the class mark. Class mark are the midpoint of the lower and upper class limit. And the formula in getting class mark is X sub M is equal to LL plus the UL all over 2, wherein LL is our lower limits, the UL is our upper limits. Then, we will divide it into 2. Just like in this example, we have here the lower limits, 10, 15, and 20. The upper limits are 14, 19, and 24. So now, how are we going to compute its class mark? So let's take a look with this first group, the 10 to 14. We will just add the 10 plus 14, then divide it into 2. 10 plus 14 is equal to 24. Then, we, if we will divide it into 2, we get 12. Next, 15 plus 19 is equal to 34. Divided by 2, we get 7. Next, 20 plus 24 divided by 2, their class mark is 22. Now, we have here the steps in constructing frequency distribution because we already know the how to compute the parts of frequency table. In constructing frequency distribution, 
first, we're going to compute the value of the range or R. So, range is the difference between the highest score and the lowest score. So, our formula is R is equal to HS or the highest score minus the LS or our lowest score. We will determine the class size or the CI. So, the class size is the quotient when you, you divide the range by the desired number of classes or categories. The desired number of classes, usually 5, 10, or 15, and they depend on the number of the scores in the distribution. If the desired number of class is not identified, find the value of k, where k is equal to 1 plus 3.3 .3 logarithm of n. We also have formula in computing, in computing our class size or the CI. And our formula is uh, I think CI is equal to R divided by the desired number of classes or CI is equal to R divided by K. So our K is equal to 1 plus 3.3 .3 logarithm of N. And our desired number of classes is 5, 10, or 15. Next, next step we set up the class limit of each class or category. Each class defined by the lower limit and the upper limit. Use the lowest score and the lower limit of the first class. Next step is set up the class boundaries if needed. We will use this formula. CB is equal to LL or the lower limit of the second class minus the upper limit of the first class divided by 2. Next is tally the scores in the appropriate classes. And lastly, find the other parts if necessary such as class mark among others. So let's take a look with this row score of 40 students in a 50 item mathematics quiz. So we will construct a frequency distribution following the steps given previously. So the first step is to compute the value of range where we, we will find the highest score and the lowest score. And you must remember our population here is 40 students. Now in this table, our, high, our highest score is 50 and our lowest score is 15. And if we will compute the range, wherein the formula is HS minus DLS, 50 minus 15 is equal to 35. And we will, and I also type here the population of our table, and that is 40. We already compute the range. Now, we will compute the class size. But in order to compute the class size, we, will, we must compute the K. Wherein, K is equal to 1 plus 3.3 .3 logarithm of N. 1 plus 3.3 .3 logarithm of 40 because our N, because 40 is the number of scores in the distribution. Next, 1 plus 3.3 .3 logarithm of 40, we get 6.29 and 6.29 is equal to the K must not have a decimal. So, we will round off it. So, 6.29 or 6. Now, we can now compute the class size. Wherein, class size is equal to R over K. And our R, the computed range is 35. And our computed K is 6. So, 35 divided by 6 is equal to 5.83. And we will con and size must not have a decimal so we must round down of 5.83 and we get 6. Now we will construct the class limit starting with the lowest score as the lower limit of the first category. So the last category should contain the highest score in the distribution. Each category should contain 6 as the size of the width count the number of scores that falls in each category or that would become our frequency. 
I used red color for the group 15 to 20, green color for 21 to 26, violet color for 27 to 32, sky blue color for 33 to 38, yellow color for 39 to 44, and black color for 45 to 50. The frequency for 15 to 20 is 4, the 21 to 26 is 9, the 27 to 32 is 3, the 33 for 38 is 10, the 39 to 44 is 4, and 45 to 50 is so here is the table that we construct for the class limit and its frequency. Now we're going to compute the class boundary. So in computing the class boundary, we will just add 0.5 to the upper limit to get the upper class and subtract 0.5 to the lower limit to get the lower class boundary in each group or category. So let's take a look with this first group, the 15 to 20. Now, we will compute upper class boundary and the lower class boundary. So, in getting the upper class boundary, we will add 0.5. To get the class boundary, our lower limit here is 15. And we will just subtract 0.5 to get the lower class boundary. And 15 minus 0.5, it is equal to 14.5. While our upper class limit here is 20 and to get the upper class boundary is we will just add 0.5. So 20 plus 0.5, we get 20.5. Next, next class boundary for 21 to 26 is 21 minus 0.5, we get 20.5 and 26 plus 0.5 we get 26.5 and so on now we will compute the class mark in computing class mark we will use the formula for xm is equal to lower limit plus the upper limit then we will divide it into two now in first group we have 15 plus 20 that is equal to 25 then if we will divide it into 2 we get 17.5 and that is our class mark next 21 plus 26 divided by 2 we get 23.5 27 plus 32 divided by 2 we get 29.5 33 plus 38 divided by 2 we get 35.5 next 39 plus 44 divided by 2 we get 41.5 and 45 plus 50 divided by 2 we get 47.5 and those and those are our class mark so the scores that we compute that express in frequency distribution can be meaningful and easier to interpret when they are graphed. So there are methods of graphing frequency distribution. We have bar graph or histogram, frequency polygon, and smooth curve. Bar graph or histogram and frequency distribution will be discussed. Bar graph or histogram and frequency distribution will be discussed in the next video. See you, sweeties. Thank you for watching.